earlier, JP talked to the punky QB known as McMahon. Let's check that out. Patrick's certainly got a, a great upside. I mean, he's, he's a hell of a talent. He's a smart kid. Uh, you know, I was talking to Andy Reid a few years ago, right when they traded Alex Smith. And uh, I asked him, I said, you're going to be okay. And he says, yeah, we're going to be just fine. He goes, this kid's pretty special. And I've, I've known Andy since the mid to late seventies, we were together at BYU. So I respect his opinion and I knew that they were going to be fine. Brady is just, uh, you know, he's, he's played a long time and, and had great success. I was very surprised. I was down in my house in Mexico the last uh, two weeks. So I didn't see him play. I didn't see any, any of the games I, when they played the Saints. I, I figured the Saints were going to beat them. And then whoever went to Green Bay was going to lose to Green Bay. So I guess I had all that wrong. When you think about Chicago and Mitchell Trubisky, he went through a lot putting on that Bears jersey um, from the Bears moving up to get him and to not working out probably as a lot of Bears fans hope that his career would have been in Chicago. Do you feel for the young man? Well, he's still kind of young. He only played, what, 11 games in college. You know, so he hasn't played a hell of a lot of football. And uh, But he'll, you know, he's, he's going to get better. I think, they, like I said, I think their offense is pretty good. And, and uh, the, the little bit that I saw of him early on was that it looked to me like he predetermined where he was going to go with the football. And that's not a good, that's not a good thing. Uh, you know, you, you should have a good idea before you get the snap who you're going to go, who you're going to throw it to by the way they're lined up. And you don't, you don't pass up open people. First guy open is going to get the ball. Yeah, that was, that was always my opinion. Because uh, you you can't sit back there and hold on to football. It, you know, you take sacks and, and turnovers and stuff like that. So you make a quick decision, you get rid of the football, and it looked to me like he was just kind of waiting for things to develop rather than get getting rid of the ball. And you know, he'll learn that. You know, just, it takes time. And like I said, he didn't play a whole lot in college, so he's still got a got a you know a lot of games to play before he gets comfortable. You know, for me, the other day uh, with the anniversary of the 85 Bears in the Super Bowl. Uh, a lot of people, I posted pictures and but tagged you on, on Twitter, but then also on Facebook. And just to see, when I post those pictures of that team, I'm talking about thousands and thousands, close to 10,000 people responding to, to that post, just talking about what that team meant for them. And, and then also as well that like, that 85 team was a reason why they started to love football. And these aren't just people from Chicago, it's from people all over the world. Does it just does it make you get tingly on your arms when you think about the impact that you guys had back in those days? Well, I like yourself. I, I still talk to a lot of people that said, you know, we weren't even football fans until you guys started winning. Uh, that I think everybody just kind of enjoyed our attitudes and and the way we, you know, we went about went about our daily routines and then uh, you know going through practices and stuff like that. But then game time was was always fun and and we. You know, not only were we good, we, we had a lot of fun. And they saw us without our helmets. You know, a lot of guys had, you know, commercials and, and radio and TV shows. So they, they saw us off the field more than they did, uh, I think, previous years. And I think that's what really uh, got people involved with us. Jim, what's your most memorable Super Bowl moment? Do you remember? Uh, getting out of Dodge without getting shot. I mean, that's what I was worried about. You know, I was getting death threats uh, for three days. and. That idiot reporter said, went on TV and said, I had called all the women of New Orleans sluts and the men stupid. And where, where they got that, I have no idea. You know, so I was, I was getting death threats for three days. You know, nobody wanted to stand by me at practice. They thought I was going to get shot. Now, I don't really remember a hell of a lot of the game. You know, I just wanted to get off the field and get out of town because it was, uh, it was getting kind of crazy. But, uh, yeah, as soon as that, you know, as soon as that gun went off in the fourth quarter, I ran to that locker room. I didn't stick around for the festivities outside. You know, in fact, when the gun went off, I, I, I looked at myself. I was thinking I got shot, but I got out of there quick. That is crazy, a story I had never heard before. <laughs> Jared, do you, got, do you have these guys on your speed dial? Do you, do you have them all on your cell phone? Yes, I do. I mean, anytime <laughs> that I need my uncles, I just call them up and they're always there for me. I love those guys.